I am not going to go in detail, but a few points on gathering literature. So, you have already seen this. So, essentially from the scientific method, we have seen that there is you could start with an observation and you could publish it. Okay. Now, once you publish it, it becomes a literature and now you are here trying to look at things that have been observed in the literature before you and from that literature you form a question. Now, you form a question your objective is to find an answer. Okay. So, the answer is essentially a hypothesis like the several things that we did yesterday, why the bus was delayed. You came up with several reasons because it was a simple thing that you could just intuitively tell, but let us say you are from Mars, you did not know what is traffic jam. You have to read about literature of people living on earth and find out what is traffic jam and answer it. So, similarly when you approach a problem, there is a question okay, and you want to come up with a possible answer, you have to read the current literature and that literature study will provide you a possible guess to the answer. Usually this literature is textbook or the current literature which will give you some clues how to solve this problem. So, using this literature you come up with a hypothesis. So, this is where the why it is important to have a literature survey. Literature survey is important to get what is done previously and from what is done previously you come up with a question and to solve that question you again need to go back to literature and see what has been understood and how you can solve it differently. And this I have already presented to you, I am not going to that in detail except that I just want to point out one important thing here which some of you know and some of you may not know is there are two ways to search literature, one is based on keywords and other is based on citation. So, you use keyword based when you do not have any starting paper to work on, this you know you have a relevant article and you look at the citations of that article, citations basically meaning suppose I have this particular article, I know that this article has been cited by all these articles down below which was published after this year 2000. If it is cited by this, I know that these are all in the same research area. So, therefore, I can find this, I can find this network. So, it is easy to do a citation based search. So, depending on what stage of work you are in, you can use either of these two methods. So, I am going to reset the question session. I want you to take a couple of minutes and if you have any questions based on whatever we have discussed so far, we will take about 5 minutes to discuss those questions and then we will do a quick tutorial activity. So, just take about a few minutes to discuss and if you have any questions on whatever I have said so far, either literature, searching for literature, hypothesis, formulation and so on, we will discuss that very quickly and then we will move on to the next tutorial activity. Okay, Tatya Sahib Kore Institute, do you have a question? Uh, sir, my question is what, uh, how we have to relate our hypothesis with our conclusion? How to relate hypothesis with what? Conclusion. Conclusion, okay. Now, conclusion is essentially kind of a summary of what question you started off with and what you found and what is to come in the future. So, as I said the hypothesis is essentially the answer, answer to the question is your hypothesis. So, you can briefly state I started off with this question, this is what I found and why it is important and uh, what is the future scope. So, that is what will come in a conclusion. So, Go we ahead. should not repeat those things which we, which we have analyzed to get to the, that conclusion. See. Uh, Think yourself as a reader, 
Okay. I said when you do the first pass, you read the introduction, you read the abstract, and then skip directly to conclusion. So conclusion is essentially the final statement that says what you have found out. Okay. So you expect your reader to also do the same thing as you did to other papers. They will first read the introduction, abstract, and then jump to the conclusion. So it is important that you state the important things of your finding in the conclusion. What are the important findings that you have found? Uh, what you have uh, important findings of this work? You state it in the conclusion. Yeah. So next we have BDT College of Engineering. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I would like to know. Uh, the exact difference between bibliography and reference? Uh, bibliography is uh, a collection of work, a collection of uh, books or uh, papers from which you have used large portions. Okay? Suppose you are writing a book okay? and in that book you have used uh, several other books as uh, and you have used lot of information at different places. So in that case, you do not cite every sentence, you do not go and put a citation to that uh, work. So in that case, you call it as a bibliography. But in the case of thesis and journal papers, you call it as references because you are using only one or two particular aspects from that paper in your work. So if you are writing a more general, uh, uh, say, let us say you are writing some general introductory thing on some subject. Okay. So then you consulted two, three textbooks for that. And you do not want to put, I, this was in page number 5, this was in page number 9, this was in page number 45 and so on. So you just, gen, you give a broad uh, list of publications which you call it as bibliography. Does that answer your question? But thank you sir. One more question. Yeah. Suppose if there is a self citation, citation of the same author yes. in his own paper, yeah. how is it viewed in research circles? So uh, it is, uh, you have to take a judgmental call on that. It might happen that it is important this particular work is derived from a previous work of the same author and it is essential part of this work in which case it is not viewed it is viewed like an any other reference but if some other if a reference is simply inserted okay just for the sake of improving the citation count that also you can identify so there is no one answer that this is good or bad it's contextual Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. This is Dronacharya. Dronacharya, are you back? Uh, myself, Professor R.C. Sharma yes, from please. Dronacharya College of Engineering. Good. In the first question that we are talking about the graphical representations, in fact, actually, we are measuring the we are making quantitative measurements, and quantitative measurements cannot be absolute. That is why the you are talking about the error bars. Correct. So, we put the error bars on a particular time, if we take the time series or whatever we take on this axis, it gives the idea the how your experimental setup, if I am a experimentalist, so how your experimental setup is done or the results that you have obtained are reliable. So, we put the error bar to ensure the reliability of our results because we take a large number of observations and each observation is different. But if our observations are within the error limit, then we can say that our results are reliable. So, that is why we put the error bars. Error bars provide the information about your methodology. Is correct or not? Your experimental setup is okay or not? 
and your results are acceptable or not the scientific community that's correct now ha huh, regarding this very path third pass understanding so we have to the criteria that you have mentioned the observation literature questions after that again literature hypothesis and prediction or test actually this is the procedure that we have to follow in a research work because any idea that come in our mind when we think to make some research an idea come in our mind and to get the insight of that idea we have to go to literature because we consider that this paper is published and we can consider that paper as authentic paper the information that we receive from the paper that will be correct to certain level that is why we consult a paper we go to the literature and we found something from the literature we correlate the literature with our idea and then we proceed further so if we proceed further then comes in the mind the hypothesis what should be the hypothesis then we put that hypothesis on the experimental test or on the theoretical test whatever the literature work is what is the research area is you are talking theoretically or experimentally and then we come to the conclusion now if our conclusion agrees with the literature that is all right otherwise we have to give the explanations how, how our results are different yeah so if you have a question or sorry i didn't get i didn't get the question i'm going i am giving my view sir okay how you work on this okay thank you very much uh, what i am going to do now is to start a quick activity and uh, i am going to display a paper okay i'm going to reset this there is no requirement of uh, hand raising now although this paper is uh, you remember we have uh, divided you have uh, chosen to uh, be in different disciplines okay now this particular paper although was categorized under biological sciences uh, now uh, i am displaying this paper okay the activity is your you have to uh, you can what we'll do is we'll uh, start now and we'll continue a little bit after lunch okay i have given permissions to for you to download your remote center coordinator can download this article and they can display it locally okay what i would like you to do is to write the question and an answer from this so we have already discussed in our lecture what a question is and what an answer is briefly a question has three parts to it the topic the question and significance t q s and then the answer again has got three parts claim reason and evidence now i want you to do a first pass reading i am not showing the whole paper the whole point is you should not read the whole paper to understand you should only read the title you should only read the title the abstract and little bit of the introduction and you should be able to get what the question is which is t q s topic question significance and what is the answer claim reason evidence take about 5 minutes and then i will quickly take a few questions a few answers if you have already got them and we'll continue this uh, after lunch as well so take about 5 minutes to i hope you can read a little bit from what is being displayed here if not your remote center coordinator can show it to you during the lunch but people who can see this clearly go through the title abstract and introduction and form these three tqs and cre okay i'm going to uh, reset 
So, if anybody is ready with uh, an answer uh, TQS, just the TQS is also ok. If anybody is ready with the answer TQS or CRE, question or the answer, please raise your hand. Ok, so this is LDRP, let us say what LDRP has got to say, LDRP. Should I uh, tell the topic first? Yes, please. Go ahead. Or start with question. Topic yes. is? Topic is effect of semantic congruity on numeric judgment similarity. See, okay, go ahead. Then question? Question is whether semantic congruity affects numeric judgment similarity. Okay. And the significance is? The significance is the demonstration of semantic congruity effect in non-linguistic animals. Okay. So, uh, let me just quickly take this uh, uh, point. So, what is your name, sir? Jignesh Mehta. Okay. So, Jignesh has uh, raised some points from LDRP Institute. Now, let me just discuss. The first thing uh, I noticed in Jignesh's answer was that he has uh, actually taken keywords and sentences from the paper and then set it as topic, question and significance. Now, a little more is expected here because just by writing down things like this, you will not, you yourself will not understand because you have put in a lot of technical words here. Okay. So, this is Eshwant Rao Chavan College of Engineering. It will help us, this study will help us in knowing uh, whether the origin of uh, man is uh, monkey or uh, some egg or it will throw some light on uh, the evolution process. Uh, this can so, be a question. That. Uh, so, what is the question now? Is, the, is that the question or is it something else? Uh, no, no, it is a question, but I still have not framed so it properly. So, can you state the question like a, 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 a statement of a interrogative form? Do non-linguistic animals show semantic congruity effect? Okay, so that is the question. So, what is the significance? Did you have time to write down the significance? To know the uh, stages in the process of evolution. Okay, so that is the significance. Significance. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, that is a good answer. We will uh, take up just one more and then we will break for lunch. Sharad Institute of technology yeah uh, i don't have the answer but i have a question yes go ahead please uh, the topic is uh, semantic that is related to meaning uh, the meaning of uh, uh, the colors uh, the numbers are uh, measured in the colors and the monkeys understand it so the topic is related to behavior and animal training and the uh, question is uh, uh, how uh, it can be utilized for uh, uh, research in uh, animal training, uh, semantic congruity that is semantic that is agreement of training of the monkeys can be utilized for further research. And what is the significance? And uh, the significance is for uh, this uh, fact that is the monkeys show the <laughs> agreement that is monkeys understand the meaning of uh, numbers can be utilized for uh, further research. The significance is not so clearly mentioned in that abstract. Okay. So, uh, we will stop there. So, I hope all of you can spend some time uh, discussing your uh, question answers over lunch and we will come back at 1.15 and we will take this up for some time. Okay. Thank you very much for this session.